didn't know me well enough, Tony, when, when God speaks to me a word like he did today, this is going to work and apply itself in someone's life watching. Yes, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I wouldn't be surprised that what we don't get a lot of, uh, you, that you rather don't get a lot of uh, uh, calls of, about this. And I think that there's some pastors that feel just like this. There's, sure. there's pastors that have stepped out and stepped up and, and, um, you know, through the course of time, uh, you know, they take a lot of them take a lot of beating and they take sure. they have a lot of the emotions. Many of them going, going through this pandemic have, have felt um, like yeah. they were less than and felt like that there, there wasn't being um, making an impact. And what you're saying right now is, is powerful. Philip, I, I, I shared this message um, on the blessing come on the second son probably 20 years ago in, um, up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I've seen a man who felt exactly what you're saying. I'd known him pretty much all my life. He was headed for divorce court. Um, he was fixing to lose his family. Everything he's had, his family was wealthy. And um, he, but he didn't have the favor of his parents. He f always felt like the favor was on the, the first son. The, yeah. the brother that was ahead of him, and even the brother after him. He was the middle. And so helped me that night changed his life so much so that his family was restored in one night. And also, the man has planted 50 churches today oh on the Amazon River for the Amazonian Indians, all because he got the revelation of what you're talking about right now, that the blessing is coming on the second son or the son that felt like that, you know, that he didn't have no favor. Listen, sure. God raises you up out of obscurity. Absolutely. God raises you up out of, out of, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, out of when you, when you feel like it's all falling apart, yeah. God has a way. If you let him and you hang tough, God has a way of raising you up. And so great God almighty is all I can say. <laughs> what you're saying today is, is revelation to, to people's spirits. Well, we're going to have lunch real soon so we can we can fill out the bones of this thing because I'm telling you, this came to me as a rhema from God. That I'm, I've preached on this as well. I mean, I know the story. But, but the Lord spoke to me and said there are going to be people watching you today that have been plagued with the second son syndrome. That they've been, they've always, they're always the bridesmaid. They're always the one that's last. They're always the one that's left behind. David, David, seventh son. He was, when, when the, the prophet came to anoint the king of Israel, Jesse prejudged David. Listen to me. Jesse prejudged David as unfit to be a king. Jesse, his own dad, said, Now, you look after the sheep. We've got an important meeting with the prophet. Samuel's coming to town, and he's got, it's a big deal, and you just go look after the sheep. And when the horn of oil never broke, what would happen is the prospective king would have a horn. The prophet had a horn with a seal. And whenever God met, the, the, whenever God's man was under the, 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 the horn, the seal would break and the oil would flow. And he went down all of Jesse's sons. And again, he went down all, second time. And he looked at Jesse and said, all your boys here? And Jesse says, well, there's one, but I don't know if this is a guy you want. He, no, he's out looking after sheep. He, he, he's got a harp and he drives us nuts with all these songs. He writes these crazy songs. He, he came in the other day and he, and he wrote this song, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And prophet, you know that, the, that God, Israel, God is the God of Israel and he's limited to Israel or Jerusalem. But, but this crazy kid of ours is up in the hills looking at stars at night. And he says, the heavens declare his handiwork. This is not a king. I'm telling you, he's a bit of a goofball. That sound like you? <laughs> Have so has someone else judged you and told you that you'll never make it? Uh, I got news for you. God is about to cross his hands and take you mm -hmm. from the second place and say, this is the one that will... I'm going to bless the others. But my blessing, my signal blessing is going to be on your life in the name of Jesus. God spoke that to me this morning for you. And, and we've uh, we had all kind of technical difficulties. And I'm saying, oh, please, Lord, let this thing work so I can get my pal on the other, uh, the other side of the screen to talk to me about this. <laughs> you know, um, Philip, the Manasseh, 
the, the, you know, you had Manasseh and Ephraim. Well, Manasseh means that God has caused me to forget my toil. So when God gave him that blessing of the, of, of the one son, Manasseh, it meant that. And then he had Ephraim. Yeah. And, and, you know, of course, Ephraim, his name uh, brought uh, life and, and encouragement um, uh, to to his to his father too, but it's amazing how that we can be going through something and God give us a, a rhema word. Absolutely, um, you know, you know, in a, in a in due season and right now, man, it's I think it's important that the the uh, pastors and church, you know, forty percent of churches in America have shut down, forty percent during this pandemic. Philip, that's that's ten percent less than fifty or than half. Yeah, of the churches in America dissolved, and um, you know uh, we you know we had to buy into some of this stuff. We're we were shutting churches down, and and yeah. you know I, I'm not so sure they wouldn't have to put me in jail before I'd shut it down again. <laughs> because well, I used... uh, you know I, I, we got to have the church, and we got to have that rainbow Absolutely. word. I can't live without the revelation that you're speaking of. I, I don't know how any pastor survives without without having someone. And, I, and, and Philip, let me just tell those who are watching that you are really a pastor to pastors. That's really what you have become. I know in my life, 20 plus years ago. Um, and so uh, the, most of them are lonely. Most of us uh, really don't have anybody. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I want to encourage people to feed what feeds them. And um, they need to connect with uh, the Orphan's Hands and Philip Cameron's ministry. And uh, Philip, if they could get 30 minutes with you, their their life would change. <laughs> it would change. Oh and uh, so I would encourage them uh, to check out what you're doing because you're, the, as my wife always says, she, she told a family this the other day, she said, I'll just tell you right now, Philip Cameron and what they do with orphans, the orphans' hands is the real deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is. It, it's, it's it's exciting, and I appreciate those kind words. We and I, Tony and I, it's so funny. Over the years, we have spent hours, hundreds of hours, on the phone, talking back and forth, and 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 just challenging other. Iron sharpens iron. And as you need someone like that in your life, if you're a pastor, find someone that challenges you up the way, that will challenge your faith, that will talk to you, that you're not believing big enough. You've got, to do, you've got to try this and let's reach for this. And when someone assures you of that, what it does, it, put, it puts wind in the sails. It gives you focus to go forward.